this is the most ultimate, most amazing, most exhilarating, most exciting, most over-the-top intro you will ever hear. And I'm also going to show you how to well, animate your pet. Since I'm speedrunning and getting copyrighted, I'm going to be using uh, uh, this guy um, who has no affiliation with any known games. Uh, him. Now he comes with um, some animations, which is cool. So last time we had Debbie here, but I'm just going to clone Debbie and just create Freddy. We're going to create a Freddy prop and we're going to go in here. So because I want this to be animated, the first thing we need is to set up our animation. So get rid of the static mesh in your prop. You need a skeletal mesh because that's what uh, you need that to actually animate your thing or whatever. Okay. In the skeletal mesh, I have my mesh acid here, which is Glamrock Freddy. You can see we have him here. So now we can go up here and set the animation to play and we can, you know, preview the animations here. You can see that's the sort of running animation. And we also have this just like wave animation where he just does this little wave thing. But for now, I'm actually not going to have him animated. I'm just going to compile and save. So we're going to be needing two cinematic sequence devices because we want to animate Freddy. So, so let's drag out our new Freddy prop. So I'm just going to drag Freddy out like so to actually trigger our animations we're gonna need as i said two cinematic sequence devices so in your fortnite devices folder you're gonna find these so just grab these i'm gonna call this one idle animation and i'm gonna hold alt and drag this and i'm gonna call this one uh well freddy run animation or freddy move animation or whatever but basically we have these two set up okay now we need a sequence for each animation so I'm going to go into my content drawer and I'm going to make a, actually I have a sequences here. So I'm going to go in here. I am going to create a new cinematic level sequence. I'm going to call this Freddy Idol. And I'm just going to control D on this to make a copy. I'm just going to call this Freddy Move. Cool. So in my, this is my Freddy Idol you can see here. All I need to do is go in here, actor, and I'm going to, add, I want to add this Freddy so I can select him. And then click on add track and add Freddy here. You can see we have now our, Fre our Freddy referenced in the level sequence editor. To add an animation, go into the Freddy here in track. You can see here we have an animation and you can specify whichever animation. I'm going to go with, this is the move or this is the idle. So I'm going to use the wave. This is the wave, yeah. I'm going to use wave and if you play the sequence, you can see he's going to start waving. Uh, this red bar, by the way, means the end of your sequence. So technically, um, as you can see here, this pink bar or this purple uh, is how long your sequence is supposed to last. But you can see this cuts off at around the four second mark. So you can just drag this all the way to the end and that's going to play everything. So we have that set up. So save and we're going to repeat the same process for the Freddy move. So like we said, uh, add him or uh, select them or you can actually go in here and search freddy and he's gonna appear here so add freddy okay, like that and save that now in my cinematic sequences go in here this one is my idle animation and for sequence we're gonna go search for freddy idle and you're probably saying, well, what if, you know, he's standing for more than eight seconds, the animation lasts for more, for more than eight seconds. Well, we can just loop the playback. We're just going to loop the animation over and over until we stop the sequence. So that's going to do that. And same process with the Freddy run animation. So pick your Freddy move and then uh, loop playback. Okay, we have our animations all set. Now we can actually go into the code. So before we begin, last time we were spawning our pets. But what I found is, unfortunately, you cannot apply animations to creative props that you instantiate from your code, which means you cannot animate things that you spawn here through verse, which is kind of annoying. So if we do want to apply animations, unfortunately, we're going to need an already instantiated object within our uefn so instead of using a debbie asset here we can make an at editable and we're going to make a freddy prop creative underscore prop equals creative underscore prop this is going to allow me to specify the creative prop in my editor right 
And next thing we want to get rid of our spawn Debbie function here because we are not going to be spawning our pet anymore. And you can see this is going to complain because we need a new function which is going to uh, handle the remote. So I'm going to make a new function here. I'm going to call it start following player. It's going to take an agent or of type agent. And first we get the if fourth character. This is standard colon equals I call it agnet dot get fourth character. If we can successfully get that then what we can do is call spawn and we call pet follows player you can see it takes a fortnite character which we already have here the fort character this one up here and for prop we can do the freddy prop down here this is complaining because we now pass in instead of the spawn debbie we do the start following player like that and same for this one if Okay, so obviously we want uh, the different animations to play based on different scenarios. We want the running animation to play if the pet is moving, aka we are calling this move to function here. And if we're not calling the move to function, then that means we don't want our pet to be moving. And instead we play the other cinematic sequence. So speaking of, let's make two ed editables here. So we have the first one. It's going to be our running sequence. Like that, and you can press shift, go up here, shift alt down, it's gonna copy it. Uh, did that one too many times. So, idle sequence. Here we go, so we have our two sequences. I want my pet to sort of stop at a certain distance from my player because currently our pet is going to be always following our player position and it's going to eventually go inside of the player. So I'm going to create a new variable, I'm going to call this distance allowed near player. It's going to be a float and here you can specify your distance. Remember we are working with centimeters. So if you want it to be two meters apart from your player, I'm going to put 200.0. That's going to uh, make it so that our pet cannot move any further than that. Okay, now that we have this distance here in our pet follows player function, here we are we conveniently already get the distance from the player which is this so we can use this by doing if distance from player is greater than the distance allowed near player what do you think should happen if the distance is greater than our distance allowed well we can move them so we move this inside we can move the pet sorry so we can move this inside if this distance so if the player position and the pet if that distance is less than what we what we've allowed then it's just not going to do anything it's just going to skip over the iteration until your player eventually moves out of that distance and then that's going to make this distance from player be higher than the distance allowed for example the pet is like 10 meters away from us and 10 meters is greater than 2 meters so they're going to get the time and they're going to be able to move next thing i want my freddy to be to the right of my player so we're gonna be using remember we're gonna be using this uh, distance allowed near player so what we can do is get the player right player right go to the fortnite character dot get view rotation dot get local right and then what we can do here is in our move to function we can to the player position we can add the player right and multiply that by our distance allowed near the player. This is gonna be our player right. Now, for example, if you wanted your Freddy to be to the left, you can just multiply this by negative 1.0 and multiply it by this. That's gonna invert the vector and make it to the left. If you want it to be forward or back from you, you can do player forward. If you wanted your pet to be in front of you, you can get the player forward, which is this, uh, it's similar here, but instead of the get local forward, and you would pass it in here to your uh, instead of a player right you can add the player forward and if you want it to be back you can pass in the player forward and multiply that by negative one which is going to make it so the vector is behind and that's going to make freddy be go behind you so let me make a variable here mm, i'm going to call it is already playing running i'll type logic and i'm just going to make this false and I'm also going to make another variable. I'm going to call it variable is already playing idle. Logic equals false. Here I'm going to do if not is already play, playing running. 
uh, question mark like that. Okay, so if we're not currently playing the running animation, then we can just do running sequence dot play. And since we've played the animation, then we can set is already playing running equals true because we are now playing the animation. Okay, so that's the running logic. Now we have to worry about the Okay, and we might as well set the is already playing idle equals false because if we're playing the running, then obviously we are not playing the idle animation. Okay, so remember how this is going to move the prop only if the distance is greater than the distance allowed? Well, if that's the case, then it's going to play the running animation. But if not, we can actually add an else statement here and do else. And we follow the same principle. So if not, is already playing idle question mark then we do idle sequence dot play and we also want to set the is already playing idle equals true and we set the is already playing running equals what do you guys think false because if we're playing the idle then we can't be playing the running at the same time. So, so if we go over our code, it's going to loop over that. If the distance is greater than yes, okay. If not, then we play the idle sequence only if a current idle sequence is already not being played. Then let's say in the next frame, my player is farther apart from the distance allowed. Then what well, we know there is not a running animation being played. So we play that animation and we set that to true to the idle playing. Also, one last thing sorry so if we do want to play our, our running animation we have to do the other animation so the idle sequence dot stop that way there is no issue there and same here we if we are not playing the the idle animation we do running sequence dot stop and we should see that in action okay as you okay as you can see there's two issues firstly freddy is not facing our player which ideally we would like and secondly he's moving a bit too fast so what we can do is here in the, remember this, this was the speed variable because time is equal to the distance over speed and it's really high right now. So I'm going to set this to 300.0. That's going to make him a lot more manageable. And I'm also going to do is in this loop here uh, for all, the, all these if statements is I'm going to actually steal some more code from uh, Polter, I believe. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but basically the code we used from the last uh, top camera perspective which followed the player so uh, just briefly go over it we first get the position of our player then the position of our camera in this case we want the freddy position which we have here this is the debbie pause so i'm just going to get rid of these two and we need the direction from the i'm going to call it direction ready to player which is just the player position in my case the player position minus the freddy position so debbie and this returns a direction vector that starts from our freddy and points to the player so that's exactly what we want then we get the angle here which is going to be our direction freddy to player dot x and a direction freddy dot player y so this angle is going to be the angle between the left and right axes, which are the X and Y. And by default, this is going to make it so Freddy would be facing right, not straight ahead. So what we have to do is sort of subtract 90 degrees because 90 degrees is a complete left turn. And we do that by subtracting pi over 2. The reason is because th this is going to return radians and pi over 2 is just equal to 90 radians. So that's why we subtract pi 3.14 divided by 2 which is just pi over 2 which is 90 so we get the angle then we create the new rotation which we use a make rotation here and we just set the vector here and we pass in the angle here all right so now we have the rotation now we can instead of passing an empty rotation here we can pass in a new rotation all right so last thing uh just this isn't necessary but because i don't want freddy to be sort of flying or jumping around I made this node jump player position, which is a vector. All of this is it takes our original player position dot x for the x component, adds the player right dot x, and multiplies that by the distance allowed near the player. And then same with the y, it gets the player position y, the player right y, and multiplies that by the distance allowed near the player. 
And for the z-axis, I want it to always be constant, so I set it at 76.0. If you guys are curious, you can find that out by basically sort of grabbing your prop here and just placing him over the floor where he looks where it looks natural. So up here, and you can go here and you can see it says 80. I put 76, but I guess we can change it to 80. That way our Freddy is always going to be at floor uh, level. And one last thing, uh, when we first send the signal, I would ideally like him to play the running animation. So we do running sequence dot play. And this is going to play once at the beginning when we first start following the player. And then here we want to set is playing running equals true like that. And then it's going to start doing all this. Last, last thing I promise, <laughs> this distance allowed in your player, I'm going to multiply this times zero point let's say 75 and then same here zero point and the reason is because i was testing this out and sometimes the distance allowed near player and this they were sort of equal to each other so freddy was sort of stuck in an endless running loop so what this does is it makes this value lower which means freddy is going to attempt to go closer to us therefore shortening the distance or closing that gap and now we can go into here, builder's code, and go to your terminal. And for your Freddy prop, you're gonna see here, we can specify our Freddy. You can just click this and click your Freddy. And with that, we actually have all we need. So let's test that out. And press A, the Freddy is going to start moving. He gets in range and he's going to start emoting because yes. <laughs> I can move if I start moving you can see he's going to start running but as you can see here there's this sort of weird glitch sometimes with the move to that I would like to fix in the next episode if I do make this sort of this pet thing a series I guess because he goes to our right and he starts emoting and you can see if I go within range uh, if I move around you can see I'm still within the distance allowed which I've set so he's not going to start moving at all. He's just going to keep playing his animation. So if I go up here, you can see he's going to start running, but he's not going to move vertically anymore because we've sort of clamped his Z axis to be always at 80.0. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. And yeah, this is like those Minecraft outros where, you know, they go into third person. So let's see if I can do that. Uh, also, <laughs> I just realized, but he has no eyes because I forgot to set the material, but yeah.